Well, good evening, everybody. Hope everybody is doing well tonight. Uh, I'm very excited. We got a great show lined up for you tonight. Uh, just had been having some fun here in the uh, the green room with tonight's guest. And uh, she's going to shape up to be a good one, people. Uh, as you all know, my name is Dennis. And uh, welcome to episode number 26 of Canoe Hounds Outdoor Adventure Show, uh, which is a weekly live stream show that brings you closer to the great outdoors. Uh, the show is geared towards bringing you hot topics and interviews of YouTube creators and uh, the personalities that you love to watch. Uh, we're here every live, here every Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, as I've been told today, <laughs> Eastern Standard Time. And uh, I wasn't even aware of that, but, but that's that's a fact, Jack. I guess. And I, ho I hope you guys will join me every Tuesday. Uh, like I say, we uh, we. Try to bring this community together, uh, paddlers, bushcrafters, hikers, bikers. Uh, you know, if you parachute, come on into the live stream and enjoy the show with us. Uh, if you haven't already, while you're here, hit that subscribe button for Canoe Hounds Outdoor Adventure Show and hit the bell notification. That way there, you're going to know exactly what's happening from week to week. And uh, you'll be able to, uh, to participate in the shows every Tuesday night. You can also follow us on Facebook at Canoe Hounds Outdoor Adventure Show. And I post all kinds of things on there of upcoming uh, shows and guests and things of that sort. And uh, a few odd tidbits of uh, funny things here and there uh, just to keep you all entertained. Uh, right now, this is the serious part. Uh, I just hope everybody right now is being uh, very safe and healthy and paying attention to all that your governments are doing during this whole COVID-19 uh, coronavirus thing. Uh, it's a horrible thing. And right now... Uh, a lot of people are being, well, everybody's being affected in one way, shape, or form. Uh, we just want to make sure that we minimize the risk of anybody getting it or anybody that you know that's close to you getting it. So please do abide by their rules. Uh, you know, if you have to stay in, you know, wash your hands. Uh, that social distancing is probably one of the biggest things that they're trying to stress so hard. So make sure you do that. Try, try and keep yourselves all safe and healthy. And I have to do my shout out to all you first line uh, people, those of you that are putting yourselves in direct danger uh, on a daily basis to make life better for all of us that are, are not on the front line. Thank you very much. You guys are your heroes in my mind. Um, keep doing what you're doing. Fight the good fight. And uh, let's try and uh, kick this coronavirus's ass and get it the hell out of here so we can put our paddles in the water or get ourselves hiking down a trail or whatever it's going to be. But uh, please do do your part, people. Do what you got to do. And uh, that's all I'm going to say about it tonight because we're here to take your mind off this whole thing. Let's have a great evening of uh, enjoyment and enjoy tonight's guest. Uh, hope you all got your toe tap and shoes on because you're going to need them tonight. Uh, if you're able, I ask that you take a second, try and share this live stream out, whether on your social media, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, whatever, whatever it is or put it in your community tab here on YouTube if you have a community tab and uh, get it out here. Let's try and fill the house because our guest tonight is well worth the uh, full audience, right? And as you know, I love to hear your feedback on shows. So if you have any suggestions as far as uh, upcoming guests that you'd like to see on the show or topics that you'd like to see us cover, drop me an email at canoehound at gmail.com. I would be more than happy to try and uh, fit you guys in with uh, the people that you want to see because that's what we're here for. And that's what I like to do myself. So let's uh, let's try and get that going. So you could email me at canoehound at gmail.com or uh, leave me a message on my Facebook page at canoehound at, or canoehound's outdoor adventure show. So that's great. Uh, just a little bit of upcoming news uh, for some upcoming shows. You're going to want to put these ones on your calendar, I promise. The next three weeks on Canoe Hounds Outdoor Adventure Show are going to be like top-notch, well, starting with today, so we'll say the month, right? Uh, on April the 18th at 7 p.m., we have a special edition of Canoe Hounds Outdoor Adventure Show. And what's so exciting about this one, you say? Well, I was contacted by David Bain and uh, Matt Olson from the Ontario Backcountry Canoe Symposium which happened to be canceled on April the 4th due to all this Corona stuff. Um, and they asked me if we can uh, work together and put together a online version of the outdoor, uh, <laughs> the Ontario Backcountry Canoe Symposium. And I jumped right at it. It's a great opportunity. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring that live to you here on Saturday night. So that would be next Saturday night uh, on the 18th. 
put it on the calendar because we are going to have many of the presenters or guest speakers that were at, supposed to be at that show will be presenting on here live. So it's going to be a great evening. Uh, we're even trying to figure out a way, some people in the live chat, as to how to set up a, uh, a tailgate party, maybe some sort of a virtual uh, tailgate party because we did that at the Winter Camping Symposium and it was a great time. So don't forget, the 18th of April, 7 p.m. Uh, next week on the show, we'll have uh, Bill Swift from Swift Canoe and Kayak, uh, shaping up to be a good show too. And it's not going to be your average show with uh, Swift Canoe. I'm, I'm actually we're trying to get into talking to Bill and trying to find out a little bit more about Bill Sr. and the steep history that the Swift family actually has in Algonquin Park. So it should be an interesting show. And of course, we will be talking canoes as well. Uh, we'll get into the history of uh, Swift Canoe and Kayak, you know, how they got their start and where they're at now and what we can look for in the future as far as their products are concerned. And then another tidbit of big news on April the 21st. I hope you all got your calendars in hand because you're going to need to mark this one down too. You guys spoke and I listened and we're going to have none other than Mr. Joe Robinette on the show. Uh, Joe has said that uh, he will come on and uh, everybody knows Joe. And I think what we're going to do with Joe is we're going to try to get a, to know a little bit more about Joe that you don't already know about Joe, right? Because uh, he's done it all. He's seen it all. He's said it all. But we're going to see if we could throw him a couple cricks into the, uh, into the conversation and uh, have a great night with it. So I'm very excited to be bringing you that too. And then we also have a couple more down the pipeline that we're going to be uh, talking about. Uh, this is the part of the show right now before we get into our guests where I like to just... Uh, Shout out a few of the people that we have in the chat here. Uh, if I don't catch you, it's not because I'm not trying. It's just I, I always mention a few, but uh, not everybody can get in there. I see we got uh, uh, Braden Cosman in the chat. We have Ride Paddle Repeat, Avid Outdoorsy Guy, Backcountry Paddler, uh, Christian Melodic, the other guy in a canoe, uh, Spirit Box Paranormal Dundee, Moda Smith Garage, David Bain. I just mentioned him earlier. We got uh, KC Happy Camper in. We got Nate Muskoka, John Van Ryder, uh, Waypoint Outdoor Adventures, and a number of others. I just want to thank you all for popping into the live stream tonight, and uh, hope you got your toe tapping shoes on. I know I've said that already before. Uh, one more thing before we get to our guest. Uh, this is a very interactive show, so hopefully everybody can, uh, or will have a question or two for myself or our guest. And I have no problem putting them up on screen. But the one thing you need to do before you type it into the chat is if you could please put the word question in capital letters so I could recognize it as a question. And then I could pop it up on screen and we're off to the races. If I do miss it, I apologize just because there's so much going on in the chat. Usually I see we got, what, 92 people in the chat already. Uh, I can't possibly get to everything. I'm a one man show and I'm trying to conduct an interview at the same time for you. So just bear with me, be patient. And I'm not trying to avoid anybody by all means. So, well, I say it's intro time. Uh, tonight's guest has over 40 years of paddling experience, both on whitewater and flat water in the U S Mexico and Canada. And he has more canoes and kayaks than his wife thinks he should have. He's also an established singer and songwriter from Nashville, Tennessee, and has had his songs recorded on over 15 million records. 15 million, that's huge, man. Wow. Uh, two of which are hanging on the walls of the Country Music Hall of Fame. He has recorded five CD projects he calls his paddle songs, in which he has written and performed songs about all things paddling, including some favorites like Too Many Boats, Camp Coffee, too Tired to Start a Fire, and Kevlar is Light. Please welcome to the live stream, Mr. Jerry Vandiver. <laughs> How you doing, Jerry? Oh, in the tent. First thing I do, fire up the pocket rocket, start the brew. Wait for a well of that wake me up aroma. And then I am a happy camp moment. With my hands around the mud, watching the mist rise. The first hot sip, opening my eyes. French press, ground fresh, dipping bag, percolator, desk of baked gourmet. Special plan, you know, I save the time with my morning cup. 
camp coffee. Later tonight, when dinner's long gone, campfire started and the dishes are done. Blue mugs waved with my caffeine fix and a little extra something thrown into the mix. With my hand around the mug, watching the sun set, the first hot sip. How good can it get? Swiss Miss chocolate chip, done a little cookie and a Jim Beam Irish beef. Baker's Mark and the Red, put it in my evening cup. Camp popping. Bear got the food, no problem. Lost the tent pegs, I can solve it. Holes in the tarp, that's easy to fix. But run out of coffee. It's the end of the trip. Gotta have my hands around the mud, watching the mist rise. The first I sip, opening my eyes. French press, ground fresh, dipping bag, percolator, escapade, gourmet, special blending, no favorite twist. This chocolate chip, knuckle little cookie, and a gin beam, Irish cream, Maker's Mark, and a rib. Put it in my teeth and cup. It's something that I'll never give up. Have a seat, I'll pour you a cup of camp coffee. Camp coffee. Camp coffee. All right, thank you. you. That's one of my favorites. I love that song. Well, That's I, my request. I noticed a couple of uh, comments, Aria. Somebody said they actually wake up to that song sometimes. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that guy should put that on my phone as my uh, my ringtone, right? That'd yeah, be- yeah. Definitely. That's all right. So how you doing, Jerry? I'm doing great. I'm so glad to be here. Thanks for asking me on. Oh, I've been, I've been looking forward to this one for a while, ever since the uh, – the, uh, Outdoor adventures. Night in the bar in Toronto. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. Yeah, for anybody that might have been there, you know who we are. It was yeah. a good time for sure. <laughs> wow, man. So, tell us a little bit about yourself, Jerry. Oh, gee, you want you want me to you want me to talk about myself? A song. Throw the, throw the book at us, man. <laughs> um, well, I'm originally from Kansas City, Missouri. I'm an American for all you Canadians. Sorry about that. And. Um, uh, I actually uh, moved to Nashville to chase my songwriting dreams way back in 1984. In fact, I know some of my high school uh, friends are, are on here right now, Judy and some of the some of the girls. We we talk about them. Um, but I also have been an avid canoeer. Uh, I actually cut my canoeing teeth um, on the Southern Missouri Ozark streams. There's some beautiful crystal clear streams in Southern Missouri in the Ozarks that. Uh, everybody that's a pal really owes it to themselves to go check it out someday. Don't ever go on weekends, just on weekdays. But uh, uh, so I actually brought my canoe with me to Nashville when I moved here to chase my songwriting dreams uh, and kind of put it off on the side of the house. And, and uh, every now and then found a local stream here in Tennessee, which of which there are many great streams in Tennessee that I paddled on. And in fact, uh, I saw Andrea's here. I took some classes from the uh, group here called the Tennessee Scenic Rivers Association. And so, but most of the time uh, I was really, really had the blinders on pursuing my dreams as a songwriter. Um, it's, it's a, it's a very competitive business here. As you can imagine, they, they say there's somewhere in Nashville alone, somewhere between 50,000 and hundred thousand songwriters trying to break in the business at any given time. And um, so as, uh, as fate would have it, a few years would go by and, I did get a couple of songs recorded, a few hit songs on the radio, and um, and then I was able to pick up my paddling a little bit more. And um, uh, a friend of mine, a songwriter here, Mark Elliott, he may be coming on sometime soon. Uh, he uh, he decided he was going to take me on a trip to this place called Quetico, and I'd never heard of this place at all. And it was a two week trip, and he said, you know, you need a canoe, and um, so I had my 90 pound Wachita aluminum canoe. And I said, oh, no problem. 
so I very I mean I actually fabricated some some shoulder pads for the thing on the thwart and uh and uh or I guess I guess you would call it it, it wasn't a yoke it wasn't a portage yoke or a portage yoke as you would say um but uh yeah so after two weeks of carrying that uh 90 pound canoe I was Believe it or not, I was still hooked, and but I bought a much lighter canoe later. <laughs> and I, I've been going, that was like a little over 25 years ago, and I've been going up ever since. And I started writing songs about it, and uh, it kind of evolved into where we are now. It's uh, been a real interesting ride, and I'm really, really glad I've been doing it. It's been just so much fun. Yeah, so now like uh, that, that kind of leads into the next question, or one of the questions I was going to have for you was, how 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 did you come about taking your your love for the backcountry, and, and you know marrying it with you know paddle songs? Yeah, it it I kind of stumbled into it. You know, I mean, one of the things that they say in the music business, especially as a songwriter, is to write what you know. And um, every once in a while, I would get an idea that it was inspired by my outdoor adventures, mostly paddle, and. Um, and I'd write those songs, but I never really took them seriously as far as the music business was concerned. I mean, I just never imagined Carrie Underwood recording a song about paddling a canoe. So I never even bothered <laughs> pitching those songs. Um, I, I think I think in the, the article you sent me there, it said something about Reba McIntyre. Oh, know? yeah, Reba. Yeah, <laughs> Reba's not going to do that. You know, just right. really, yeah. She's from Oklahoma. She doesn't even know what a canoe is, I'm sure. <laughs> and I apologize for anybody that's here from Oklahoma. But anyway. So uh, that being said, um, I actually was on a, uh, a canoe country bulletin board with a bunch of guys. And my board name at that time was J Stroke. And somebody posted um, an, uh, a, a review of the first canoe songs project that uh, James Raffin produced. And, uh, and uh, I say he was the executive producer. And then uh, another fellow was producing the record. And and I and it and the picture of the of the uh, CD had a guitar in a canoe. And I said, "Gee, that's so me." So I ordered the ordered the package, ordered the CD, and uh, I it was in Toronto, and uh, I got an email from the person saying, "Wow, we've never gotten an order from Nashville before. Who the heck are you?" And and uh, and I said, "You know, I'm just a songwriter in Nashville, but I'm an avid paddler, especially up north and." in Ontario and as in the boundary waters. And, uh, it just, this is me, you know, and she said, well, send us some more songs. So as fate would have it, the, the first canoe songs project was, I guess, understand it was fairly successful and it was done as a fundraiser for the Canadian canoe museum in Peterborough. Some of you may know that. Mm -hmm. And, um, so they invited me to, uh, submit some songs to the, um, to their next project. They decided they're going to record Canoe Songs Volume 2. And I did. And one of them got recorded by Cindy Church, a wonderful folk singer up there. And uh, later on, uh, about, gosh, six or seven months later, they were having a CD release concert at the Canadian Canoe Museum. And they invited me to come up and play it and uh, and play the song and, and another one. And 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 the ex I was really excited to meet a bunch of Canadian musicians up there and, and kind of get to know them and their craft as well. So I went up there and, you know, the whole concert was about songs about paddling. And I thought, wow, this is really fun. And um, so I came back and just came back inspired by that experience and wrote a few more and wrote a few more. And then one day I got a crazy, crazy idea Canoe Copia was coming up uh, about six months in advance, and and I knew Darren Bush really well up at the, in Madison. And I just Great said, guy. "Oh, I've got these songs that are just sitting around. I why don't you let me come up and and play them as a presenter? Nobody else does music there." And and he said, "Yeah, come on, let's try and see what happens." And so I did, and it just kind of been, has been a steamroller since then. And uh, five CDs later, and these wonderful people that are watching us now have been so supportive and, and um, you know, I don't see any end in sight yet. I, know, right? I thought one, you know, I, I recorded the first CD and I thought, okay, that's it. You know, I mean, how many songs can you, can you record about the outdoors and write and stuff? But I found out there's just no limit, um, yeah. you know, and, and we all, uh, it's a small group, you know, I mean, I, I'm lucky that Tim McGraw's recorded my songs and have those 15 million records and stuff, but 
um, I love this audience even more. It's it's more fun. Now let, let's talk about that resume of uh, of music that you've written and and and, uh, and people that you've written for. Okay. Well, it uh, in fact, let's see if I can if I move this right direction. Okay, so that there, I'm in my writer's room here. So there's some of my records. Oh, there we go. Some of the background. You see, if I can point this one right. Oh. Yeah. Oh, oh, there we go. Right. <laughs> Got to think opposite. There. Oh, no, there. <laughs> okay, yeah. That's my very first major label recording. That was done by Gene Watson. Uh, and uh, that was actually, um, he was on Warner Brothers Records at the time. And uh, it went to number five on the country charts. Uh, and so that was a real good jump start for me. Um, and uh, that kind of started to set things in motion. It never gets really easier but it does help to have a little bit of a track record. And then uh, a few years went by some other songs, uh, Barbara Mandrell, Lee Greenwood, and some people recorded some of my songs, and a really cool all, all female group called Wild Rose. And, and uh, then um, uh, this brand new artist on uh, Curb Records decided that he wanted, he was going to record this song of mine. And um, it, it's, it's a really stupid, silly song. Um, and, uh, but it, but I was excited, you know, uh, although he was an unknown at the time. And so he did record it. And a couple months later, my music publisher, uh, called and said, Hey, we got, we just got the new recording. You want to come and hear it? And so I went to hear it. And, um, I have to tell you that it, we, it, I was disappointed it, the quality of the recording was nowhere near as good as the demo. My co-writer, his name is Randy Archer. He was saying it. He's a great singer. And I thought this re this recording was not up to snuff. And I actually told my publisher, I said, you know, I don't think this guy's going to go anywhere. We need to keep pitching the song and stuff. And and uh, the guy who recorded the song that I said wasn't going to go anywhere is Tim McGraw. Hmm. So, and that, let's see if I can make this that's the album he's on. Oh, <laughs> the big, the big fancy framed one, huh? Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's a platinum five record award. It's actually gone. It's actually sold six million records now. And um, uh, so, yeah. So, what do I know? Tim McGraw recorded my song, and then he recorded another one a couple of years later. And uh, it's it's been a great ride. It's been well, congratulations. Really that's incredible. Yeah, yeah, it really is. Yeah, and now, and now you've brought your uh, your musical prow prowess <laughs> over over to our side. Yeah, you and know it, it's really kind of cool because um, you know when when you're trying to, especially in Nashville, it's about the song, it's about crafting the song, and and um, really you know every word, every melody, movement counts. And uh, over the years, you you are it's beat on into you to try to make less is more, keep it simple, and yet communicate a unique idea. And so when I write these songs about my experiences outdoors and stuff, I try to encompass that learning that I learned in the very hard school of hard knocks here in Nashville. And um, uh, it's really, really rewarding, really fun. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> earlier in the green room, I, I was asking you, uh, I was, I was kind of going over some questions with Jerry here to, to see, you know, well, so I could prepare him so I don't catch him off guard with questions. And one of the things I wanted to ask him was, uh, if he had to choose one of his songs <laughs> as, as, as his baby, his favorite song that he's oh. written, uh, obviously off the, uh, the paddling songs, which one would it be? Oh, it if be play play it now? Huh? Mm -hmm. Well, my, my standard answer to that question, and it's yeah. a really honest answer, and that is because it's just kind of our nature, and I think anybody that's in any kind of creative mode, whether it's painting, uh, uh, poetry, songwriting, whatever, the last thing you created is the one that, that, you, that you love the most because you're most excited about that. And by the way, yes, Steve... Kazoo, I need to put you on my next record. <laughs> um, so that being said, the last song that I've written and completed was actually written with uh, Caitlin Evanson, who plays fiddle with me. We, we wrote a song um, uh, just right after Canoe Copia called No More Room in the Van. And we wrote it as a duet. And I'm really actually quite excited about it. It's a really, really fun song. 
And it's a paddle song. It's about going paddling and not having enough room in the van because as guys, we have to have all the gear and all the big stuff and everything like that. And a woman, of course, has a different attitude towards that. So, but so that being said, um, whoo, okay, do I have to whittle it down to one, huh? I would well, say, I'll tell you what, you, instead, instead of saying it, why don't you play it? Okay, I could do well. Let's see, I don't know which one it is yet. Um, <laughs> you know what? I is by the way, is, is Caitlin in the green room yet? Uh, I'm not seeing Caitlin or uh, or Ashley in the, in the green room quite yet. Okay. I'll let you know as soon as they do. Um, there's one song, but I'd really like to see if we could play it with Caitlin because there's such a beautiful violin part in it that uh, it's okay. called um, it's called This Quiet Place. And um, I, I'm real I'm real real drawn to that message of that song and and the beauty that it tries to express about our surroundings and how important it is to preserve that. But um, that being said. Favorite song. See, because yeah, if, if you didn't let me do the paddle songs, I'd probably point to the one that sold 9 million records by Tim McGraw because. Okay, you know what? It doesn't have to be a paddling yeah, song. That, if you'd like to play that, we'd love to hear it. Um, sure, why don't, why don't we do that one just for the fun of it? And then when Caitlin and, and Ashley come on, we can hopefully do a couple with them of the paddle song. Sure thing. So, sure. Let's do, so this is the, the, the second song that Tim McGraw recorded of mine. Um, mm -hmm. Let me. Uh, Get the right key on that, and um, this is uh, this tune. Uh, I always like to give an introduction to it because there's so much truth to it. In that, this song um, uh, was recorded by Tim, and it uh, it it was um, a, my biggest hit so far. Um, I, I, when I say so far, it means I hope I have some more. But um, it was recorded by Tim McGraw, and he. Um, he released it on his um, uh, CMA album of the year, which was called the album was called Everywhere. And then he put it on a greatest hits album. And then he put it on several other special edition albums and stuff. And and I always like to say that uh, uh, it actually wound up nine million records uh, of all those total. And um, and when I sat down, I wrote this song with two other guys. And I was driving at the time a 1983 Mazda 323 with 181,000 miles on it. 1987, take it back, 87. It wasn't that long. And, um, and I traded it in after this song, 9 million records, on a 98 Nissan pickup truck with 124,000 miles on it. This is called She Was Mine for a Little While. This is here. <laughs> dedicate this to all the Southeast girls out there. Hot sun, dancing on the river, sit on the bank, watch the world go by. Meet in the water, she press her lips to mine. We were so long on love, short on time. She could be Honey, I'm sweet in a little while. She was mine. Whoa, for a little while, and I laugh every time I start to think about us. We sent that summer out in style, and she's gone, but she left me with a smile. She was mine for a little while. Take a ride, head on down the Temple Road, put the seats back, watch the planes leave town. She always said, nobody's strong enough to tie her down, but I wasn't looking for that. Anyhow, thank you, Carol. I knew she'd leave, but I didn't know when. This matters to me now. Whoa, but it did back then, and I laugh every time I start to think about us. We sent that summer out in style, and she's gone, but she left me with a smile. She was mine for a little while. I keep seeing pictures now. 
for me and her and those summer nights. My mind filled with her. Oh, but it's all right, cuz I laugh every time I start to think about it. We sent that summer out in style, and she's gone, but she left me with a smile. She was mine, yeah, she was mine. Oh, for a little while. There you go. All right. Yeah. Yay. Thanks for applause into that chat, people. This is incredible. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jerry. That's a good tune. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll self admittedly say that I, I am not much of a country guy. Shame but, on you. But you know what? I love your music. I love your oh, music. You. I really do. Yeah. yeah, you know, most of the stuff I do, um, I mean, it's kind of the classification country always kind of um, it, 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 it unfortunately pigeonholes something. Um, oh, that country panel, I'll get that, uh, get that just a second. Um, uh, because a lot of the stuff that I do really is not country, so to speak. It's not that crying your beer twine stuff. It's more bluegrass folk Americana stuff. But anyway, to answer your question. This is a Martin D28. See if you can see that there. Um, it's a 1956 model. Oops, here. let me get her on screen there. Yeah, sorry, wrong guy. Here we go. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. There well, we go. Uh, and I'm the third owner. I've owned it since 1976. I brought it uh, with me to Nashville from Kansas City. So it's Carry a that around in that Mazda 323 a bit. Yeah, uh, actually. I came to Nashville in a 72 Volkswagen convertible. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, it didn't last very long. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, so uh, Ethan here from Mavid Outdoors, they had no idea you wrote that song. There you go, people. Bringing you the people that bring you good stuff, right? Yeah. yeah. And thank you, Avid Outdoorsy guy. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So that's obviously, oh, I see uh, Ashley's in the basement here. Good. Uh, we could bring her up in. Hey, would you ask Ashley to text Caitlin and tell her to get in here? Did you get that, Ashley? I think she got that. Okay, good. Looking down, it looks like she's looking at her phone. So that's good. Yeah. I'll bring her up there when she's all done that. Right. Great. Right. <laughs> that's awesome. Okay, so we want to – you were talking earlier about uh, that you love paddling, like the Quetico area and the Boundary Waters area. Yeah. I understand something special happened to you up in that area? Um, and I, mean, I have a feeling you're, you're, uh, you're referring to my wedding. Yes. Okay. <laughs> That's a good thing. I said that. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, um, it, it was interesting. Um, I, I, I'll tell you a funny story kind of behind it all too, that, that most people don't know. So Gracie, who you've met, uh, she's coming in and out of the camera. Uh, when we decided to get married, we were actually kind of having a, having trouble deciding, where and when we were going to do this. And, um, and uh, we initially thought, oh, we'd go to a little outdoor place here in Nashville and stuff. And, uh, but, but then um, uh, it, it just kind of wasn't working out right. And then as it turns out, her son, Gabe, who actually now lives in Singapore, he was living in New York at the time, he wanted to go paddling in the Boundary Waters. And so I thought, well, why don't we just do it up there? And um, uh, so we did. We actually uh, wound up, uh, for those of that are familiar, we met in Ely and a whole bunch of people, including Steve Freeman, uh, who was uh, my, uh, uh, not bachelor party MC, was a rehearsal dinner MC. And uh, yeah, <laughs> old scouts, what happens at the Boundary Water Station? <laughs> anyway, so we actually um, had a ceremony at an entry point there in the Boundary Waters. And uh, uh, Gracie's son, Gabe, was the... Um, the best man and uh, his girlfriend who is not his wife now was the, I guess she was technically the maid of honor. And um, then we went off and paddled in the boundary waters for about five days uh, as a part of our honeymoon. So, yeah. So, uh, and so the, 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 the story that's kind of behind it is when we were trying to figure out how to do this, I was kind of worried because it was September. In fact, we got married September 12th. We want to make sure it wasn't the 11th. That was not a day we wanted to commemorate. 
um, in that regard. And um, so we got married on September 12th. And I love going up in that area in September because the bugs are down to a minimum. The weather's usually really good. The loons are still there. Uh, it's just a great time to go. And the kids are back in school, so you have less, less people to run into. But so I was worried, oh, no, I'm, I got to celebrate my anniversary every year. And that means I won't be able to go paddling. So I made a deal with Gracie. I said, I tell you what, our first anniversary, we should obviously spend together. So here's the deal. If we spend our odd number anniversaries, I promise we'll spend our odd number anniversaries, one, three, five, seven, on as far as it wants to go, um, together. But on even number anniversaries, I have the right to go paddling. And so she, she said, that's a good deal. So we, we made that deal and it's worked out great. That's awesome. So it's yeah. a testament too, also to obviously your love for that area up there that uh, you would actually marriage honeymoon. Yeah. It yeah. just makes sense. It was, yeah, it, it would, you know, defines who you are. Now I, I also asked uh, Jerry back in the green room too, about, uh, you know, he, he's traveling all the way up there from Nashville. Right. Right. So yeah. that's, uh, that's quite a drive. That's a, that's a great, uh, great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm envious because you know what I can say, honestly, I've never paddled up there and uh, I sure would love to one day. Well, uh, right now I'm seeing two very pretty, pretty, pretty faces down in the uh, green room. And okay. I'd like to bring oh, them up. Here? Okay, good. Yeah. So uh, we'll see here. Uh, we're going to have a four split screen going here. And we have Yay! Caitlin Evans. Hey. How are you doing, Caitlin? Hi, good. How are you, Dennis? Great. Great to have you on. And we also have Ashley. How are you doing? She's got her base there. Yay. Oh, got her taking a sip of what? Fine whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> That's Hi, awesome. Ashley. Hi. <laughs> so, Jerry, I'll, I'll let you uh, tell me a little bit about the ladies here. Um, whoa, wow. Okay, so uh, a little bit about the ladies. They're my, they're my better half, easily, or my, maybe my better two thirds is really what I should say. Um, Ashley is, um, she's been, how, you've been with me about four years now on this really crazy ride, I think. Have you not asked? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So That's Ashley, all right. she's a real uh, prominent person in the bluegrass community here in Nashville. Plays some of the iconic places like the Station Inn and and, and she's open for the steel drivers. And if, if you're familiar with the bluegrass people, she's she's up there. And and uh, I'm really honored that she's, she still loves to play this music. She's also a paddler. And she has a is a 17-foot aluminum canoe. Um, and she uh, uh, she has just, just got married. She moved out into the wilderness outside of Nashville near Joelton, Tennessee. And... Um, uh, I, you know, anytime I get a gig, if I can budget her in, she's, she's definitely my call. Awesome. And, um, yeah, so she's, she's wonderful. And then Caitlin over here, she's kind of my newbie, so to speak, but we feel, I feel like we're just, yeah, right, right. <laughs> that way. Opposites. There, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. Wait, am I pointing <laughs> the right way? Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so Caitlin has, has, uh, uh, has joined me in this thing. And, uh, I was kind of like, I've been a big fan of Kate. Oh, by the way, I need to go back for a minute. Ashley, Ashley's in, in addition to all those things is also a wonderful singer songwriter and has done many, many CDs with her music as well. So a lot of times when we perform, I like to single her and Caitlin out to play some of their songs as well. So now that being said, so I'm a big fan of Caitlin's and um, she unfortunately doesn't play out as much as I would like her to. Um, so as a result of that, as a result of that, I always follow her around. <laughs> she probably thought I was, like, who's this weird guy off in the corner, <laughs> you know? And uh, her and her husband just had this wonderful vibe that they play this great music together. And, uh, and she plays violin while her husband plays guitar. And, um, so I asked her, um, what was it, Caitlin, last fall, I think you played, you were playing the song nest. And uh, like in September, and I had a gig set up at the Bluebird, and I asked Caitlin if she'd play it, and uh, she did, and we've become fast friends ever since. Caitlin's uh, has she's played for some pretty heavy hitters in the in music business, um, and so I'll just name them off if you don't mind, Caitlin, real quick: is Taylor Swift, Ringo Starr, uh, Shakira, Luke Bryan. It's a disgusting list. And none of those people have ever recorded any of my songs either, which is really <laughs> sorry. You got to put a word in for them there, Caitlin. But but the good news yeah. is, is that is that 
is that all those all that touring she's done kind of she didn't like doing it it was kind of took her away from who she really was and so i meekly asked her if she'd like to join me on this and quickly found out that she loves the same things that i do she's a she has a sea kayak she's paddled up in the pacific northwest a lot and um uh, so you know i i Asked her to see if she's interested in joining on, and we've been playing now for the last almost a year, and it's just been, it's just been great. We've been having a great time, and like I mentioned earlier, Kate and I told her, told uh, Dennis about our our new song, "No More Room in the Van." <laughs> <laughs> we've got it as a duet, so hopefully it'll come out someday soon, and everybody will go, "What in the world is that thing about?" Any, <laughs> any chance at a sneak peek tonight? Um, we we are totally unrehearsed on that one. I don't know. <laughs> I. I'm down for it. I, You're, of course you are. You are. You always are. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll have to see if I can pull up the lyrics or something. That's what weird. I have to. I'll have to have as well because it's yeah, a bit yeah. tricky. So, I, th I think what we should do. I think we should let us do is we'll just have to come back and do it at another time to be really safe. okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, what we are going to try tonight, and uh, Jerry and I were saying that uh, we're not sure how it'll everything will sync up here um, on on the show because we're all in different areas, but I, I think within StreamYard here, we're pretty much in sync. So if you guys would like to try and perform something, we can't guarantee it'll turn out 100%, but I think it will. What do you think, Ashley? It seems unlikely, but I'm game to <laughs> <laughs> Come you know, on, I, I have, it, Ashley. It'll be, oh, go ahead, sorry, Jay. No, 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 go ahead, go ahead, Kate. Um, there'll be a delay. So if you want to just push and be ahead of the beat the whole time, <laughs> you'll be perfect. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, maybe really. You know, our, she's but like, no. it'd be easier for me to tell you to slow down. <laughs> um, but no, Dennis said that he didn't think it was a delay on this format. Not, not within Streamyard. It, when it when it transpires oh. over to uh, YouTube, it will. There'll be about five seconds behind us. But our our like our communication as we're speaking right now would. It, it's no it's all in sync, right? So I think if you guys want to give it a try, let's do it. What's the worst could happen? It doesn't work, right? right. Mm -hmm. think, everybody, put a number one in the chat if you want to see another song with all three of our performers here. Mm -hmm. I, I, noticed, I noticed nobody's chatting anymore. Have, have we lost our entire audience? No, like, no, mm -hmm. no. I think they're uh, all very intrigued. Okay, let, mm -hmm. let's 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 try a couple of bars of Too Many Boats and see if we're in sync. You want to try that? Mm -hmm. All right. This is getting good, people. <laughs> <laughs> is this is this uh, Canoe Hound Adventures history we're making right here? This is. I've never had a musical <laughs> guest on the show before. Let's we'll see. Okay. So uh, you guys are making me look good. Thank you. <laughs> Ashley, let me play a little bit and see if we got sound. Oh, okay. Okay. Caitlin's got it. Ashley? Why don't you get closer to the to your laptop, maybe, or your are you on your phone, Ashley? I can get closer, but we'll see. Let's see. Let's see here. Oh, you won't be able to see you though. Well, you'll be able to see my base. Is that better? You see your fabulous yeah. focus. What do you think? It sounds a little bit better. Uh, will this help here? If you're listening through computer speakers, you might not be able to hear it at all. <laughs> okay, let's let's do a couple of bars of A. Just with the one chord and just see if we got if we're see in if it works. Think, Dennis? Sounds good on my end. What do you think, people in the uh, chat? Are we good? <laughs> I'm not seeing anybody saying anything here. It's no, they're so showing a bunch of numbers because they all want to see this. Alan, I what know you're watching? watching. Say again, Caitlin. Alan, I know you're watching. Yeah, you know what, Alan? You know, I want to since, since we brought up Alan. Alan posted up earlier. He said, "Jerry, who?" Question mark. So ah! we're going to ignore Alan tonight. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's try it. Kate, you okay with it, Ashley? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to. You good, know, of course. <laughs> Some of my friends think I've got an addiction. Showed up last 
speak for an intervention. They said, look around you, son. You've got too many folks. I've got too many irons and too many fires. Too many projects. I won't deny it. When it comes down to anything, there's no such thing as too many boats. With a trailer in tow. Oh, you're going too slow. You're in for trouble, and it's no joke. They said, Look around, boy, you got too many boats. I've got too many tickets from not enough quarters, too many exes, and too many lawyers. When it comes to no such thing as too many votes. Caitlin. <laughs> Yeah, that worked. <laughs> now, when my time on this earth is through, there's one little favor I'll ask of you. They can be right on my headstone. There's no such thing as too many boats. There's no such thing. No such thing. No such thing as too many boats. <laughs> well, did we do it or not? I don't know. You know what? That wasn't too bad considering we're uh, we're all rookies here on the internet, right? <laughs> you guys aren't rookies, but the internet thing is here. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. That's uh wow. Good stuff. Thank you. I'm I'm, <sighs> I'm impressed we pulled it off, quite honestly. <laughs> So we got we actually got a couple of questions here during that time there. Uh, Karen's asking, how can she buy her CD? Oh, Karen, you're the best. <laughs> um, there's actually two websites to buy them on. Uh, well, there's actually more than that. But uh, the main one is my website, paddlesongs.com. Um, and um, you can go on there. And all my all my CDs are up there on, in the store, paddlesongs.com. Also, jerryvanderber.com. Uh, cdbaby.com has them as well. And then you can also download them on iTunes and uh, Amazon. So, or once all this mess is over, you got to go see them at a show and yeah, get yeah. an autograph right in person, right? Yeah. You know, actually, um, uh, Caitlin and Ashley and I and Amberly Rosen this Saturday are actually doing a live concert here in Nashville. We're doing it. In, I'm calling it a front yard con front yard social distancing concert. Um, so I'm going to be on the front porch. We're going to have the PA system out. Ashley and Caitlin and Amberly will be out in the yard. We're all going to be at least six feet <laughs> away from each other. Yeah. We're not rehearsing, so that's going to be even better. <laughs> and uh, so we're putting on a neighborhood concert just for the neighbors to come out in their front yards and their backyards and, and sit on the streets and and uh, give them a little uh, – respite from this crazy you, know what? you you should you should put that on facebook live what? yeah i'm going to try to do a facebook live as well yeah awesome. fact, so speaking of that let's go ahead and promote that while we're at it so yeah. um if you're not a facebook friend of mine please go do that or go on to caitlin or go at ashley in fact go to all of them and um uh and then friend us all and then i'll put it up and we're talking 
three thirty, guys. By the way, I haven't really honed that down with you yet. I think we were hoping to do it on Sunday, Easter Sunday, but the weather here is looking is looking not very good, so we moved it up to Saturday. So we're going to do it three thirty this Saturday. Now that's three thirty in the afternoon, Central Daylight Time. <laughs> Give I mean. Giving, giving Dennis a hard time about that. That's and, okay. That's okay. Yeah. I got we'll talk, we'll, we got about an hour of songs. There'll be a mix of of, uh, of different songs, some paddle songs and some other songs other than paddling songs and, and uh, just a general fun entertainment thing. And uh, Caitlin's going to play a little bit of mandolin as well as fiddle and Amber leaving on fiddle. And, and uh, Ashley will be doing her magic on bass as well. Awesome. So you know what? Yeah. If you if you send me the information, I'll share that back out yeah. on uh, Canoe Hunter well, Adventure Show, and we'll make sure everybody gets. Uh, yeah. I mean, well, yeah. In fact, Gracie and I are, are tomorrow going to put together a little flyer of uh, of of the, of the four of us, make it look like we know what we're doing, and uh, and put it up on on a virtual ad so people can tune in. I'll send that to you as well with all that information. That'd be great. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, Jerry, I have a question here. It's uh, been okay. up here a couple of times. Matthew's asking, uh, you have you have a few songs uh, with First Nation styling and artists. What's ah. the connection? Yeah, thank you for that. That's a great question. I don't think I've ever been asked that. Um, the have a seat, Ashley. Have a drink. Excuse me? Oh, I said, I told, asking Ashley to have a seat and have a drink. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Already halfway there. Um, okay. My, my connection is is you know as far as I know I I don't have any uh, native gen genetics in me, um, but I remember the very that that very first trip into Quetico I went into um, we we came across some pictographs there and I just became completely enamored with that, um, and so much so that it was. It was it was something I started reading about and studying about and and kind of find out more about the people that left those pictographs there and finding out where others were and stuff like that. Um, so I um, the very first song with that connection that I wrote was uh, called Wabakimi and Wabakimi, as my understanding, is an Anishinaabe name for whitewater and. Um, when I wrote that song, I actually wrote it in Wabakimi. I was on the Wabakimi project with Phil Cotton. And uh, I was actually writing it kind of to the cadence of my paddle. And the, the native spirit up there, or the First Nation spirit up there, just to me, I could feel it in the air. And um, I decided that I wanted to write a song with that background in mind. So I, I put it together. And then I called upon a friend of mine here in Nashville. His name is Bill Miller. He's a, he's a Native American. He's a Mohican. He's also three-time Grammy award-winning uh, flutist. He plays Native American flute. He's won three Grammys for those projects. And he's a very deep individual about his Native heritage. And we talked a lot about it. And he came in. I asked him if he would come and play flute and on this song about Wabakimi. And he, he graciously did. And then he said, you know what, I'd like to put an Anishinaabe chant on this because he apparently comes up to the Grand Portage um, Reservation every summer and works with the youth at risk up there. And he's very close to that tribe. And so he put this mesmerizing chant on it. And that just take, took me into another direction. That introduced that song introduced me to um, a First Nations woman named Cheyenne Havorka, who lives in Nipigon. At the time, she was living in Thunder Bay, and I had always wanted to write a song about my experience at Fish Dance Lake, where there are some pictographs in the Boundary Waters. And when I to give you a quick reference to that song, because that's kind of what's important is oh, there you go, uh, Fish Dance Lake from Old Scout. Um, maybe. I don't know, neither uh, Ashley nor Caitlin have I ever rehearsed that song. But anyway, so when I went to Fish Dance Lake for the very first time, it was a solo trip and I went on that quest. And um, when I entered the lake, I was, the waters were really, really windy and it was very difficult to navigate. And then when I came out on the main part of the lake, the waters completely died and I almost drifted to the pictographs. They were stunning pictographs. And I had this uncanny feeling of being watched to the point where I kept looking behind me to see if somebody was watching me. 
And I'd heard other people have this experience on this particular area. And by the way, Caitlin, if we get to go there this summer, we're going to go to these pictographs. Oh, and, yes. Yeah, and, and Ashley may be going with us too because we're bugging her to go as well. But anyway, so I wrote the song. I, I wanted to write a song about that experience. And then after, um, after my writing with Wabakimi, I approached Cheyenne. Uh, we had done some songwriting workshops and some shows together up in the, uh, the Boundary Waters area in Grand Marais. And I approached her and said, I'd, I'd like to, to write this song about this, but I don't know the spirit behind it. So she gave me some of her First Nations input on that. Um, and that song was born as a result. Then um, last September, I, um, uh, for those of you that may know this on my latest CD, I, I went on a North Star Canoes, which I need to bring up by that, we'll bring them up soon, by the way. Yeah. I went on a North Star Canoes uh, trip on the uh, uh, San Juan River in Utah. And that area is inundated with petroglyphs. I mean, it's almost, you can't walk five or six feet in a campsite without running into it. these ancient petroglyphs. And there was one panel of petroglyphs that as far as the eye could see uh, around me that were 2000 years old. And, and they were up about 10 feet up on a, on a rock face. And I was just very moved by that. And I, I, um, I was I already had kind of a melody in mind. And the next thing I decided we were at camp and I had my little baby Taylor guitar with me and I went off to this kind of little Canyon area and the song just came spilling out. And so when I wanted to record that, I called Bill Miller back up again and he graciously came on and put another magical chant in it um, and, and um, honored me with his presence on that as well. So, and he's played a concert with me and Ashley as well. So, um, I hope uh, hope that answers your question. Oh, there's Kevin Callen. Uh oh, you know what this might mean. But anyway, I hope that answers your question about the First Nations input. I, um, you know, I I I have such a deep respect for that for that culture, and um, I want to honor that in my song because that culture is so much an important part of the area that we travel, and uh, it 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 I it would be. A folly for me to ignore that and that's kind of where that comes from and that's probably way too long of an answer but there it is wow that's yeah awesome. um so we're going to be doing our giveaway in a minute uh okay. but i do want to ask you uh about your your you've had a long lasting um sponsorship relationship with guys on your hat North right? canoes. yeah my good guys north star canoes yes um it uh, uh i have uh, had I've known uh, Bear Paulson and Ted longer than our our, our business relationship. Um, they're just they're just people that they walk their walk and they and they walk their talk and and uh, and they're they're environmentalists. They make an amazing boat, and um, I never approached them for any kind of cross promotion sponsorship or anything. And um, but uh, when Dave and Amy Freeman were um, in their one year quest in the Boundary Waters that many of you may know about. Um, uh, I went and played, I actually went in and wrote a song with Dave and Amy uh, about their um, message they were trying to convey about the mining threats to the Boundary Waters. And when they came out on their 366th day, which was in a, a September, uh, I flew up to that area to, to play that song at their ceremony. And um, uh, North Star Canoes, Bear Paulson and uh, Ted uh, Bell, the designer of it all, were there at the ceremony not to tout their product. They were there to support Dave and Amy. And I was really moved by that. And they saw that I was there for the same reason. And Bear approached me and said, you know, we are definitely of like mind. I think we need to, uh, to do something together. And that's how it came about. So I've been with them. Gosh, I think about uh, I think we're approaching our fourth year now. And um, it's a great, it's a great relationship. Um, they take me canoeing, and I wear their hat. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. It's great to have a relationship like that. But you need to ask, you need to ask Ashley and Caitlin some questions about this. They're not just here for the music. I want, I want to, <laughs> I want to hear from them. You know what? We we will get into the whole roundtable thing here after okay. uh, the Fair giveaway. Enough. Fair enough. Um, I, I do, of course, want to hear a couple more tunes. Uh, okay. I, I actually put in a special request of one of my uh, favorite uh, oh, yeah. years. 
And uh, but let's let's do the giveaway here. It's eight o'clock, okay. and everybody knows uh, that's a regular on the show. Every week, I like to give away a, a couple of, uh, in this case, three uh, Canoe Hound Outdoor Adventure Show sticker packs. Basically, a whole bunch of stickers for your water bottles, your your uh, yeah, your car, right. grandma's forehead, whatever it is. Uh, that would be great. And tonight's question, everybody get ready because the first three answers I have, correct answers that I have, uh, will win the uh, the prize packs. And my question tonight is, what song did Jerry open up the show with tonight? First three correct answers get the, uh, the prize pack. And I'm just going to put my email address here on screen so that you can drop me your full mailing address when I do call your name out. Da, 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 da. While we're waiting, Caitlin, I just noticed somebody, Daniel Malloy, just said something about a bunny. Yes, he's here. He's yeah. here. Okay. We, so we have any there? Our, <laughs> we have our winners, people. We have winners. Yeah. We have our winners. Uh, first three that piped in is uh, Matthew Augusto, <laughs> and then we have Charles Giffen, Giffen? Yeah. and we have Moto Smith Garage Co. If you three can drop me your full mailing address to canoehound at gmail.com, I will get those sticker packs out to you uh, as soon as uh, possible. So that'd probably be like tomorrow sometime. So I need your full mailing address with your name, of course, and I will get them out to you. So once again, that's uh, Mortal Smith Garage, Charles Giffen, and let me go back up. My chat disappeared on me here. Da -da -da -da. I lost them there. Matthew Lagusto. Gusto. Gusto. I am the worst of the last names. I'll tell you, people. <laughs> uh, let's see here. So, congratulations. You need, you need to have that about that rabbit. <laughs> yeah, what's with the rabbit? What that, am I missing that? That? It's the Easter Bunny. Yeah. The Easter Bunny. <laughs> he is so tired of me chasing him around and picking oh, him up. Okay. Oh, yeah, I, I see it on Facebook. You just got a, you just built a little rabbit house. And... Yes. Jerry's <laughs> garage. I said, I, I got this idea. Uh, I'm sure it was probably wine induced. And I was like, I really want to build a house for for my body for eddie rabbit and um and so i of course text jerry i was like he's the tool guy he's he, he's gonna know what to do and we built the whole thing this beautiful little red house with mahogany rafters and a high ceiling it needs a chandelier we haven't done it yet um, and it has picket fence a little picket fence doorway for him that he rubs his face on he's oh, he a, does Yes, he's he's very spoiled. I got him by accident. Um, <laughs> by accident. And, yeah, um, we were at the Quiet Adventure Symposium, and um, next door to the Quiet Adventure Symposium was a rabbit convention. And you know, I was manning the table for only so long before I'm curious about these long angora bunnies and all these things. I want to, I want to go walk around and see this stuff. So I went in, and I saw the lion's head bunnies that just look like poof. They, their fur is so big around their little manes that they can barely see their eyes. And he had piercing blue eyes. And this big white lion's mane of, of fur and fuzz. And I just loved him. He just melted in my arms. And I called my husband and I said, honey, listen, <laughs> we don't have a baby. And um, I think since you're such a mean old man that you don't want us to get a dog, the least you could do is let me have this bunny that I found for 40 bucks. And I mean, he's... He is the best pet. Uh, so Jerry helped me on this adventure. At the end of the Quiet Adventure Symposium, we're driving home from Lansing, Michigan with a bunny in my lap for yeah. eight hours. <laughs> it was the best. <laughs> Keep the lap warm. <laughs> you know, when she said a, a rabbit convention, I have this picture of a bunch of rabbits gathering around and having conferences and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because the guys on Paddling Adventures Radio, they always go on about the rabbits during that show. All <laughs> really? the yeah. it, they are definitely there. It's a whole different culture. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, rabbit uh, culture is real. 
as everybody could see, I added somebody else to the live yeah. stream. And for I those know. of you that you know him, you might not recognize him these days being all clean shaven and everything. Uh, Mr. John Ber Berger, how are you, buddy? I'm doing well. How are y'all doing? Awesome. Awesome. Good. I like how Caitlin said that. That How did you, you, you got, found the bunny for $40? Yeah, he was, he was on sale for 40 bucks. Yeah. And my husband wanted to name him 40 because that's how much he cost it. But I was, I was like, that's ridiculous. <laughs> And Jerry and I, Jerry took great pride in spending the eight hour drive on the way home <laughs> trying to figure out what the best name would be for Eddie Rabbit. <laughs> wow. Eddie is just such a great name for that rabbit. <laughs> He's He's I, I, want, I want Caitlin to paint some gold records or something on the wall of the house. Yes, yes. I'm going to do a Mona Lisa painting with, <laughs> with bunny ears. <laughs> That will be a classic. Yes. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah. Oh wow! So now, that, now, with that in mind, what what uh, Ashley has done at Canucopia, she goes around to all the raffle people and all the contest entries, trying to get free canoes. <laughs> Amberly and I did that one year, and then okay. I spent a full year unsubscribing to a bunch of stuff. <laughs> Never again. Too many emails. Gotcha. <laughs> Um, just wanted to say for everybody that's in the chat right now, this is the part of the show. This is the, the formal part of the interview is all gone now. This is where we get to converse and have some fun. And if you guys want to be part of it, by all means, do get your questions in for anybody on panel here. Uh, John had asked me to uh, if he can join the panel tonight because I guess you wanted to tell a story or something, John. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, can I? Can I can I go away right now? <laughs> <laughs> well, there are some stories. What I actually wanted to do was uh, was just for people who knew Jerry by his music, um, and you know, from the going out to Canoe Copia or Quiet Adventures or something. I, I just wanted to also say that um, I have a lot of respect. Jerry is like one of these great. I'm going to embarrass you, Jerry, here, but Jerry is one of these like legitimately great guys. He also does a lot of work with animals and with dogs. So he will uh, work with shelter and foster dogs. And so, you know, he's a great musician. He's a paddler and he takes care of dogs. I mean, so I, you know, I'm just gonna embarrass you, Jerry, and say, this is a really great guy. So, so definitely buy his music. There you go, thank you. <laughs> yeah. That's all good yeah. stuff. Yeah, I, I see. I've seen a lot of posts. I guess you just recently had a, a, a batch of dogs come up from somewhere. Like we actually uh, one of the one of the many dog rescue things I'm involved in is a, it's called a transport system. There's a whole culture out there. It's really pretty fascinating. But um, where these people find these dogs in kill shelters, dogs that are on death row, literally. Um, and they'll pull them out of the shelters and they'll find uh, places uh, up north. Uh, one, one place in particular is in Niagara um, and some places in Canada where, where the dogs will go up to the no-kill foster areas and, and find adoptive homes on it. And uh, there's a whole, it's almost like a relay. Like I'll drive from here to Bowling Green with a couple of dogs and then somebody else will drive them from Bowling Green to Louisville and then from Louisville, it just keeps going further and further. And uh, it, it's it's really special. Some of these dogs are just so absolutely precious. It's uh, it's an honor to take them take them out of death row and into a, a forever a forever home, as they call it. A oh, forever, forever. Yeah. You, you mentioned Niagara. I, I remember just recently hearing something about that, about a bunch yeah. of dogs coming up to Niagara. So yeah. Yeah, there's a there's an organization up there. I think it's on the American side, but it could be wrong. Uh, that uh, that's really really good at pl about placing uh, dogs for homes. So now all this talk about dogs kind of makes me remember one of my favorite Jerry Vandiver songs. There you go. Because for for great reason, I have a dog named Molly. That's and the first more time I heard this song on actually it was on Paddling Adventures Radio, one of their early on episodes. I almost crap myself. I go, that's my song, man. Uh, <laughs> it's such a compliment, Dennis, to say you almost crap yourself when you almost crap myself, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they they they, they say uh, in songwriting, make them laugh, make them cry, make them sing, make them dance. Maybe I need 
Make them laugh. Make make them laugh. Make them laugh. Yeah. <laughs> how, about, how about a two, Jerry? We got a lot more. You guys want to do me and Molly? Sure. I don't think we've ever rehearsed this song, have we, Kate? We haven't, so I'll be winging it. But okay, yeah. don't call me. again. Yeah, Molly. We're in uh, F. In F, that's right. Yeah. No, Molly's at my daughter's house tonight. Ah. Uh, yeah. But she'll she'll hear it later. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see, Caitlin. Trying to see if I can give you some. Uh, it's really an. Uh, First, first, ah, you'll figure it out. You're a pro. Here we go. I took her. She took a bow. I settled in. She settled down. Put her nose on the floor to get the best view. That's me and Molly in our canoe. We talk about the ways of the world, all those we love, and how she's a good girl. And then she'd show a big smile. It says, I agree with you. It's me and Molly. Here my best friend, my companion, always by my side. Wherever we land, and no journey was so hard, we couldn't make it through. The journey was so hard, we couldn't make it through. It's me and Molly. In our community. They say there's a bridge where she's waiting for me. And I hope there's a clear stream below. Because when I meet her there, it will be so sweet when we jump in that boat and go with the flow. When I go with my best friend, my companion, always by my side, wherever we land, and no journey was so hard, couldn't make it through. It's me and Molly. It's me and Molly. It's me and Molly. It's me and Molly. I'm sure, Kevin, you make me feel bad, buddy. <laughs> Good job, you guys. All right. Thank you very much. So I see that we have a virtual heckler that has come on board. Yeah. I know, right? <laughs> That's okay. We might we might get a little revenge on him tonight. I think we can. Yeah. 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 Uh, and I see he's wearing a, something around his neck. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but does he have his instrument? I think he does. <laughs> Thank you, Mama yeah. Blue Bandana. Blue Bandana. So, yeah. what are you doing the stream, Kevin? How are you doing tonight? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm <laughs> good. Wow. So, what do you think, people in the chat? Do we need a couple more tunes? Do we have any requests? 
Well, I have a request since with with Kevin and the bandana here. Let's dance. Let's do it, you guys. You got your stuff nearby, Kevin. I do. I I, I, I still. I, I still <laughs> Come on, Kevin. You got this. Come on, Kevin. <laughs> okay. So, let's do it. We're gonna get ready for it. Wait, wait a minute. <laughs> He's sanitizing his people are leaving the chat. The only thing that's about to come up. There we go. I might add, by the way, that's how is that stuff, by the way? Oh god. Who's no? that? Wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Did I mention at the top of the show that Kevin's given everybody a roll of toilet paper that's <laughs> around till the end? That should have been the giveaway right there. <laughs> oh, you, know, you don't like that uh, that moonshine from Tennessee, <laughs> Kevin? Yeah. Old Scout's been using blue bandana as a mask in Minnesota. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Now the bandana, you know, we had. Uh, we first had a, a, a full on toilet paper and then bread and, and, and disinfectant, and now everybody wants a bandana. Jerry, this is not going to save your ass. This is going to save your ass. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you could start a parody, I, uh, maybe blue, blue N95 mask. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I think, it, I think in, in case of dire need, the bandana could save your ass. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. No paper left. But yeah. I'd say at that point, there's no refunds, right, Jerry? That's oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, <laughs> there's no refunds anyway. No return policy. So you, you want to try this? Sorry, Kayla, didn't mean to make the boy drink oh, your nose. God. <laughs> okay, so so I got to give you a little background of the story. So, so uh, last spring, a year ago, when I was. Uh, when I was uh, getting ready to go on my trip, I have a blue bandana and I, and I put it in the laundry, in the laundry machine and it came out like this. This is my original blue bandana. And that was just devastating. So I wrote this down and, uh, and I got the idea that Kevin should play harmonica on it because the blue is the blue song. And uh, Kevin has now had what? Six months to practice now. <laughs> <laughs> you just yeah. keep laying the pressure on you. What let's do, what let's do. So we'll do two instrumentals, Kevin. We'll, we'll let you do the first instrument. You want to do the first instrumental and then Caitlin do the second. You want Caitlin do the first and you do the second. I, I'll just do back up. <laughs> no, you're doing one. Right. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Let Caitlin, you do the first one. Okay. Let me just say that it's, this is not a negative thing, but when when, uh, when Camille Kobe was canceled, I was like, Yay! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ooh, hey. Listen to that. That's the best I've ever heard you do, Kevin. Well, I've had the room down you gave me. So. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to give you a count. Go one, two, three. Yeah. By the way, Kevin Kevin is a drummer, so he ought to, ought to be able to keep time real good on No, it. no, I can't. There's a delay all around, so literally this is just going to be what it's going to be. That's right. It's going to be what we call a train yeah. wreck, I think is what it's going to be. Yeah, that's so okay. I'm going to say it. I think this is going to sound yeah. like gold. Jerry, when things mess Are up, you play it, John? An internet problem. <laughs> yeah, right. So that's no excuses. Here we go. Ready? One, two, three. Back to the store. Bandana aisle. Right and blue. Just my style. Travel the world. And ever receive it. That bandana aisle. It's got a trip coming up. And I don't know what. It's a rubber band flash, a blue 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 band flash
went back to the store, took a look around, no bandana, could be found. This one hurts. I ain't gonna lie. I missed that banana for a while. I got a grip on it up. And I don't know what to of the show available for purchase at the end of the show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Hey, Sorry, hey. my tackle. <laughs> hey, show me off, Dan. I'm done. Where's my phone? <laughs> He's winded. He's winded. Well, what were you playing, John? Uh, I was. Uh, I saw somebody over there sing sing along, John or something. It's like you don't want me to do that. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> Never awesome. says, don't forget to bring the blue bandanas to Canoe in 2021. Sever I got one with your name on it. Oh uh, yeah, really? Yeah. No, no. <laughs> and I had a chat, so much fun the last few years. I, I, I sort of oh the, the things we've done, the things we have done, and actually you have experienced that. More than Caitlin, and so sorry for that. So <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry. Wow. Well, you know, speaking of which, one of my favorite things that Kevin did was he uh, he danced to the bear barrel polka. That hurt. That was a good one. Yeah. Oh my lord! With a bear head on him, but yeah. I got, because oh. thanks to Ashley, I had Ashley and Caitlin and Amberly over for dinner a while back, and Ashley brought. Toasted him. Yes. Yeah. Barrel, bear barrel age. The bear. <laughs> wow. This awesome. is real stuff, Kevin. And, and don't go across the border with a bear head. 
Like, that was wrong. Oh, that's true. Oh, that was bad. But that's a really good wine. Where did you get that? Um, just the regular you wine store. Head in a wine store or it was like before store? my favorite liquor store got tornadoed away. Oh, it was the oh. store. Okay. Oh, yeah. So I, I know, Caitlin, you you were affected by that tornado. Were you as well, Ashley? No, I just moved out of that neighborhood like the night before. Wow. Can you wow. believe that? Wow. But your liquor store was affected, so that's my favorite liquor point. store got tornadoed. <laughs> what? I think that must have been the one I seen on the news. All everybody's standing around just crying and heads down. Yeah, that was yeah. probably, I mean, I was. Kayla, Kayla's house had a huge oak tree just completely cover it. Yeah, the room I was sleeping on in too. The a tree came down, and if it kept going, I would have been a goner. My life yeah. was spared, and we have three rentals, and all three of them were damaged and being rebuilt right now. So, yeah. Wow. Well, well, at least you were okay though. That's the yeah. main thing, right? Yeah. I, and I, I felt so lucky. I, I, and Jerry <laughs> kind of comes climbing through the wreckage with a coffee in one hand, <laughs> half and half in the other hand, because he knows that I like to pour it in myself and blow on it so that it makes little clouds. In the, and he did. He brought them separate for me and and helped me the entire time with what a nice guy and other stuff that he, it was really it meant a lot to me he helped me fix a lot of the a lot of the wreckage we got through it yeah i had to walk about a mile to get in what's that i had to walk about a mile to get in and, and climb through her fence that was really what was amazing yeah and i was complaining about my shed being upside down and etc cetera, etc cetera, until i walked a block down the road right. and i said I'm never complaining again. Yeah, yeah. This you, you, you got out so lucky. Devastation. Devastation. I'm alive. Yeah. Yeah. My thumb is blue. Can you make yours blue too? I don't know. I'll work on that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Smash the thumbs really. up is what they're after. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm leaving, Dennis, because it's all to do with them, not me. I, I'm, I'm leaving and just enjoying the show. Play another song. I love a oh, Kevin, song. thanks for popping in. Hey, uh, I'm glad you performed. <laughs> let's, let's have some applause for Mr. Cowan. <laughs> oh, cool. So uh, I think I think everybody likes to hear the music. Do we want to hear okay. some more tunes? Yeah, let's do a new one. Let's do um, one of the ones we were going to do at Canucopia. Oh, I have an idea. Let's do my other car. Oh, uh, yeah. Is that okay? Yeah, what key is that one in? What's that? What key is that in? Uh, G. All right. Ready. Yeah. I know. Poor well, Ashley. I send her all these songs and I tell her the wrong keys. <laughs> well, I was just checking because we only got to play this one like once. So. Yeah, I know. I know. And that, that was at the uh, was that the, at the hotel in Madison? This will yeah. be a blast for delay. Yeah. So um, this is, uh, as some of you may know, uh, Ken Burns is a documentarian, and he did this amazing, wonderful documentary about country music. I think it's like 16 and a half hours. And um, as it turns out, uh, for some reason, you guys, I don't know why, when Ken Burns was doing the documentary, he didn't call me or Ashley or Caitlin about it. But can you yeah. do that? You know, I mean, I was very, I kept waiting around for him to call us and we just never did. So I got to thinking about it you. and I decided that, was that? It'll be in the next one, you know? Yeah, I, be, I, be oh, I, I, yes. <laughs> there needs, he needs to do a follow up one. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think, and I think this is going to be the theme song. So I decided to write a really country song with a pickup truck in it, so we could have that going in it, and um, and maybe Ken Burns will change his mind and do it, uh, do us a little favor here and do a documentary on us. So this is this is off the new CD. The new CD just happens to be called. Thank you for asking, Dennis. It's called The Middle of Nowhere. No, it's called The Middle of Nowhere. Name of the new CD there, Jerry. I can't believe. It. <laughs> I don't even know the name of my own city. Hold on a minute. There we go. Hold on. Keep holding that. Keep holding that up, John. There it is. There we go. Oh, there. 
They're down. Oh, there it is. Thank you, Jen. What does it say? I feel like Jerry's hype man tonight. Oh my God. <laughs> Gee, maybe I should put up that picture you sent me earlier, John. But see, you know, see, look at that. You see how he signed that? That's the other thing about Jerry that's great. He'll write anything on your CD. <laughs> it doesn't matter what it is. Look what I got. <laughs> They're all are yours. Love, Jerry. Love, Jerry. <laughs> he paid double for that CD, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> you charged them for the ink, too, eh? <laughs> Yeah. All right, you guys ready to do this? Yeah. My other car. One, two, one, two, three. Oh, my other car gets incredible mileage. Glides right along. With the greatest of ease, it was you. People drop the All it takes is a little bit of elbow grease to carry my food pack, camp chair, long john underwear, coffee pot, trigger too. While sleeping that fungi, peely bop, cook stove and alcohol fuel. Most of all, this much. Pick a man to do. This mild car is a canoe. No, I'll never see a check engine light in the morning. Leave the lights on and drain the battery. It doesn't start a little slow in the morning. But at least I never have to go looking for my key. To carry my food pack, camp chair, long john underwear, pop my trigger food. At least top bungee, dealy pop, cook stove, and alcohol fuel. Oh, you all as much as any pickup can do. It's my other car. Is a canoe. Okay, are you ready for this big old harmony part, Caitlin? Oh, yeah. <laughs> remember, this, remember this part, Ashley? This is where we countrify with a capital K. Here we go. Now, variety is the spice of life. You can count on that. When I need a change of pace, my other car is a kayak. To carry my food pack, camp chair, long gun underwear, coffee pot, and trekker boots. Top punchy, candy pop, CCS tart too. Oh, all the Any pick of candy. It is a viable car. Can't take me too far. Oh, my other car is a canoe. Well, that wasn't yes. too bad. Yes. That one actually came across sounding really good. You guys are right in tune on that one. Amazing. Yep, yep, yep. Maybe this internet thing is getting better. So did Kevin leave us? <laughs> so Kevin left, yeah, and John. I, I I would love to know how uh, how Jerry ended up with two talented musicians such as Ashley and Caitlin. I'd like to know that too. 
Why don't you let them tell the story? I'd like to hear from their perspective. Ashley. You go first, I'm Ashley. think of like, how did I meet you, Jerry? Did I meet you through Amberly? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you were like, want to go to Canoe Copia? And I said, what's Canoe Copia? <laughs> and then you told me about it. And I said, yeah, why not? And then I went to Canoe Copia. And that was the beginning. She got <laughs> Cause I, I don't know, like I met you through Amberly. Yeah, 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 yeah. That that was that. That's and then the I went to Canoe Copia, just like that. Yeah, <laughs> just like that. Eh? Yeah, and we Amberley played we, we played more than Canoe Copia though. We uh, songs, uh, uh that, we that played was um, uh, <clears throat> what was that? That was up in Zumbro. We played that show there, and of course we played the uh, the concert at Douglas Corner here in but Nashville. That was after my first Canoe Copia. What's that? And that was after my first Canoe Yeah, Kobe. right, That's right. what really launched it all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That is, yeah. Canoe Kobe definitely launched everything. So what you that was like four Kenukopia. years ago? You two been uh, playing together? Uh, yeah. Before? This would have been her fourth Canoe Copia. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah four years ago. Cool. Yeah. So, Caitlin, what's your story? Okay. You sought me out like a true creative soulmate would i'm really serious. yes oh, wow. and I, I i thought about this a lot actually is my husband and i were playing at song nest live at the crying wolf in east nashville um it's a great bar hopefully they'll get back on their feet like everybody else it's such a mess right now ah oh, anyway it was great it was wonderful he came to song nest live and saw my husband and i playing then waited till the end of the show uh, and Teardown comes up to the stage, introduces himself to me, and says, I would sure love to play with y'all sometime. And, um, yeah, and I'm not sure if you did a Bluebird invite just then or you did it a little later. No, it was then. Okay, it was then. Okay, okay. So you did you did bring up the Bluebird. Yeah. So, so when he said, do you want to play the Bluebird, well, I've – played the Bluebird Cafe, the Notorious Bluebird Cafe in Nashville, backing people up before. So I thought his invitation was, hey, do you want to be in my backup band to play the Bluebird Cafe? But he liked what we did that night as songwriters and singers, and he actually wanted me to be one of the singer-songwriters in the round at the Bluebird. And I didn't know that, right? And so I was like, yeah. sure, I'll play Bluebird for you, whatever, you know. Yeah, uh, no big deal. No skin off my nose. No, uh, that's what I was thinking. I was like, yeah, I'm happy to play for this guy. He's nice, you know. But then, as like I'm trying to remember when you revealed it, but we, to, you, you came over for dinner. Yeah. With I wit. You and Pedro came dinner. over. Yeah. And I was like, so what are we gonna be backing you up on? You know, like let us. We hadn't done any rehearsals or anything. <laughs> And he said, no, I want you to be one of the writers in the round at the Bluebird Cafe. I was like, you mean I'm not like backing you up? I'm not in the band? He's like, no. I, want you. <laughs> I cried. I cried. I, it was so sweet. I, I wanted to cry. Never. <laughs> in my 17 years of living here in Nashville, have I ever been a singer-songwriter at the Bluebird Cafe? And so... He invited me, and uh, that was one of the greatest nights uh, of my life. It was. It was magical. Yeah. He so he sought me out, and then, and then he's just like, "Man, I got an idea," and he's a doer, and he does it, and he finishes it, and he did it, and he's like, "Let's write this song." No room in the van. No more room in the van. We'll 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 get it for you, Dennis, eventually. Mm. Get it for <laughs> you, Dennis eventually. We get. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just answering some people in the chats here too. That's okay. Every, everybody seems to have uh, seems to be enjoying the show tonight. Good. That's. So now, you guys, you you play a, a circuit down there of, of different. Um, I won't call them bars because they're not they're not all bars. Obviously, like well, there's plenty of bars though. There's plenty uh, of bars. Plenty of bars. Oh yeah. Well, there, well, there were. There aren't any right now, but. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Nobody's playing anywhere other than right here. <laughs> yeah. 
And that's yeah. why I'm looking forward to this front yard thing. That's going to be cool. Yeah, yeah. well, that, it's kind of interesting you bring that up because, you know, that's the thing that we miss so much of playing together. And, and um, you know, we're, we're great, all great friends and, and, and like hanging out and stuff. And so I really, I was like, I woke up early one morning last week and I thought, why couldn't we do this from my front porch for my neighbors and, and uh, just do a concert? We don't have to be tight on the stage or anything. In fact, you know, when I was thinking about Caitlin when she's played for Taylor and Ringo Starr and all those people, she's probably eight feet away from everybody anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and uh, feet so, from stardom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the hardest, hardest thing you're going to have, like with doing setting that up, is not having people saying, screw it, I'm going over to see what's going on, right? Well, I mean, that, I mean, I think. That's part of the deal. I mean, we're, we're, we're going to play for our immediate neighbors. I'm not inviting like, the whole city or anything because I don't want to break any laws. I mean, we, do, we don't have a um, – the order that we're under in Nashville is called safer at home. Um, and, you know, and I think they did say something like no more than 10 people in a gathering, which I don't know why. They, I mean, are we in a shelter in place yet? I think we are. Are we in shelter in place? Or we're about to be. Okay. But I could well, be wrong. I, I think I – mean, Everybody's been, I mean, like when I walk the dogs in the neighborhood and somebody's coming my way, they go to the other side of the street. Now, that may be because I look pretty scary. But I think that, but Super I think intimidating. It, yeah. I think it's actually because they're trying to maintain distance. And so we'll have, my front porch has, you know, three neighbors immediately surrounding me. And so I think they'll, you know, they'll obviously just be sitting in their yard. And the other neighbors, I think we're going to, We'll be able to just sit in the street in the parking area and stuff like that. I think everybody will maintain distance. Thank you, Kevin. Everybody purchased CD from Jerry, Ashley, and Caitlin. That's a good point. All of us have CDs. Hope By all means. Start. I appreciate all that, means. Kevin. I, I, I'm personally waiting to meet you guys so that I can actually get an autograph copy of all five. Forever yours, it, Dennis. All wrapped in a blue bandana. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Well, got a pair of bunny ears, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's got the for, for anybody that is interested though, I, I do have uh Jerry's information down in the uh, description below of this uh this live stream. Be sure to check it out uh and and, and you know follow him on Facebook and stuff like that because he does get a, a the odd posting up there of things that he's doing. But uh yeah, well, you know, Ashley, Ashley and Caitlin, and Ashley, what's the website people can go to find out about you? AshleyCoddle.com. That's easy. And Caitlin, I know you've got a couple. Yeah, CaitlinEvanson.me is my website. Um, and you can see fun old photos of Ringo and Dave Stewart and I, and like all these fun live things. But I also have a stream on there. But, but I was going to tell you, uh, I've been posting lyric videos on my YouTube channel, so Caitlin Evanson, um, of just songs that I've been writing during quarantine. So I'm writing them, recording them myself. So forgive that they don't sound like Justin Bieber's producer didn't do it. Um, and then, and then I'm doing a little lyric video with just a, you know a, a a photo of one of my artist shots. So I'm releasing one daily. Um, of new songs as well. So you're writing a new song every day? Um, no, no, I've just written a whole bunch, and now okay. it's time to actually do something with I the darn thing. Wow, that's productive. If, if you ladies or, or Jerry, if you if you wouldn't mind shooting me their their uh, links to their website, I will definitely get okay. them posted in the description below so that anybody yeah. can come back and check it out and definitely uh, get in tune with that there because, yeah. Like uh, Kevin said, let's support the arts by all means. And yeah. I find right now, you guys find that with all this stuff going on, so many artists now are starting to, uh, they're, they're doing live performances, putting them here on YouTube for people to see. Yeah. yeah. Right? Because yeah. I'd imagine, I, I've been watching uh, of, all, of all bands, the Bare Naked Ladies, they've been posting almost every day a different, uh, you know, a different one of their songs. And they're doing something, a format like this, where they're all in their own place and they're, they're playing and, and, post yeah. and I yeah. think it's a great way, you know, people are uh, just finding new ways to connect through all this stuff, right? Yeah. Yes, there's tons of opportunity if, if, if your eyes are open, I think. Have you seen the one, um, 
that John Krasinski uh, posted the other day with the Hamilton cast. Yes, you wow. sent it to me. Yes. Yeah, that is just stunning. Yeah. Very you know, cool. Yeah, it was. It brought tears to my eyes. It was so good. Yeah, it was beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful, yeah. especially the tutu at the end. But now, Ashley, you do uh, you do this thing called songwriter sessions, don't you? Can you tell us about that a little bit? Uh, well, that's um. That I've been releasing EPs called the Songwriter Sessions. But what I've been doing during lockdown is I'm just making videos and releasing stuff weekly on my Patreon page. But I've been doing that anyway, plus the live streams. So just like lots of little snippets on my uh, Instagram. But yeah, I've been making videos to accompany my songs. And my most recent one involves a snail just going across this rock in the rain. Oh my. And then he goes over the edge. That's the highlight <laughs> of the video. <laughs> it really represents, you know, like how I feel right now. I know, right? <laughs> Everybody's feeling that way right now, Ashley. A snail apocalypse. A snail apocalypse. I mean, he's trucking there once he gets over the lip there. Poor guy. So oh. fast. Actually, I think to it like if you go back now on i think on jerry's facebook page i'm not sure about if the other two of you had that on there as well or shared that uh if you go to jerry's facebook page you can see the facebook live thing you did the night before the canoe copia that was uh -huh. right yeah yeah you can which was fantastic and I, I i sat and i watched that you know live and it was just like we sort of needed that that night, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you. We needed it too. I, <laughs> <laughs> let, let, let me tell. Let me tell you a story about that and how how it affected me. That that little uh, ditty that you guys did from the Clarion Hotel there. I was supposed to leave with my buddy that night uh, for Buffalo. We were going to be flying in, and uh, then we I, I obviously I seen that the news or that the on uh, Canoe Copia's website saying that the event been canceled. And at that time, I felt both kind of uh, really disappointed because it was going to be my first canoe copia. But at the same time, I also felt uh, kind of relieved in light of everything that was going on. So I let my buddy know and, you know, we just started chatting and stuff. And then we got off the phone and I started going through Facebook and like much to my surprise is like, boom, boom. Jerry Vanderveer's live right, right now. On. So I started watching and you know what you guys, you guys took uh, an empty spot in my soul that night there and uh, you know, in a happy place because wow. I was like, tapping my toes and it's like, yeah, from that point on, it was like, yeah, this is all good. Jerry, but, <laughs> oh, yeah, and you know what? I, I'm sure you, you guys had like, a, I think, 100 plus people in uh, on that stream that night. And I, uh, yeah, it was actually worth, uh, now it's up to 4,000 views. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and yeah. there's that thing where you could tap like you know the little harder, the happy face. And oh you yeah, yeah, yeah. Be Popping up your screen throughout the whole yeah. thing, and that was awesome. The only bad part about what you guys did is you called it to an end. <laughs> <laughs> you ended it. You know, there's an old saying, Dennis: "Leave them wanting more." I know, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wear everybody out, you know. And, and I want to emphasize for those that, that uh, are listening to us talk about this right now and didn't see it. Um, it was not what you're experiencing tonight, which is those these guys are backing up by song. But it was a, it was a, what we call a songwriter round, in which I would play a song, then Caitlin would play a song, then Ashley would play a song, and just goes around and around and around. And that's something that happens when Nashville's back on task. Um, that's something that happens every night here, uh, somewhere. Um, in fact, multiple places every night, and it's it's a very special. Um, a very special, a special moment to hear songwriters, just them and their guitar or their banjo or bass or whatever, play their songs, and and that's what we that's what we did that night. Um, so that was that was really special. And then the really cool thing was the next day we went to the Mustard Museum before we left. <laughs> I, I still use them. They're so good. I use them. We ate all the mustard. We yeah. ate the one, the mustard in uh, uh, Irish whiskey or whatever. It was gone in the week. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't that surprise me. It was gone like within the week. <laughs> well, we're uh, we're getting close to the nine o'clock hour. We got about ten more minutes before okay. we're ready to close the show up. Um, I think it'd be great if you wouldn't mind entertaining us with a couple more tunes. 
Okay. Uh, I, we've had we've had a few suggestions come in. Uh, I seen somebody put in there. Uh, Kevlar is heavy, or <laughs> Kevlar is light. <laughs> 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 well, yeah. heard the carbon. No. <laughs> um, you know what? Yeah. Our, let's do that one. If you wanted to do two, then uh, let's do the one I mentioned earlier uh, that uh, I wrote with Dave and Amy Freeman in the Boundary Waters. Uh, it, it, yeah, it's called, it's called this quiet place. So, okay. tell you what, I'm going to let you guys go. Thank you. I'll sit here with the uh, with the cigarette lighter. <laughs> you guys have a good night. Good seeing y'all. You want to around for the after party, John? Uh, you're more than welcome to. I can always pull you back up if you just want to duck down. Okay. 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 So we're gonna do Kevlar's light. Okay. Yeah. Uh. G, right? Yeah. 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 And uh, each of you get a solo, right? Each of you get dark over here. <laughs> yeah. 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 Your, your light disappeared. Oh, really, really, that blue sky was really pretty when you were playing. I was outside because yeah. it was so beautiful. I figured my back porch was the place to be. And, and now, I don't know if you can hear it, the frogs are going nuts. Oh, yes. okay, yeah. Wow. Cool. <laughs> Anyway, carry on. <laughs> okay, so um, so yeah, just like we we've, we've done it in the past, then we'll do um, uh, uh, we'll do a fiddle solo. This will be after the second chorus. We'll do a fiddle solo, and then we'll go and do a a, a bass solo with us stopping on the chords. Okay. Yes. That sound familiar? Yes. It does. Okay. One, okay, so let me stop. One, two, three, and. I've paddled for years with a little bit of struggle to get those portages done. Picked up my permit one summer night. Now Peter told me kept my life. Oh, Kevlar's life, Kevlar's life, Kevlar's Or worse, coding a drum might as well be a hearse. Now it's so easy, no longer a fight. Ever since they told me Kevlar's life, Kevlar's life, Kevlar's life, Unis. I think Ray might be on on the uh, chat here with us, so I want to make sure that he gets credit where credit is due. A cast iron skillet and old canvas tent, a big bowl and cooler, a bag of cement. Don't try to tell me my way isn't right. I can bring it all because Kevlar is like. Kevlar's 
Kevlar's heavy. Like <laughs> hey, we've been, by the way, what's really great about John putting that up there? So your dog Molly was in there, and then I don't know if Caitlin knew this or not, but Eddie was wandering around in the background too. Yes, he is. He was jumping around in the background. I had to stop him from chewing on the rose bushes just now. But yeah. Oh, okay. God. One more song. So Kate, One more, and then we'll get into our closing. Okay. Uh, let's do um, this quiet place. Yes. Okay. Okay. And uh, I think we do this in E. Is no, that correct? No, no, stop it. Stop it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie's getting scolded. On the rose bushes, on the rose leaves. Ooh, can't have that. No, does he eat your cables? Leaves. No, he doesn't. He's That's amazing. I swear, he stays out of trouble. He's litter trained. He's never peed anywhere but in the house. In the, not, no, I'm sorry, not in the house. In his house <laughs> that we built for him. He's only That's amazing. Ever peed in his litter box house. That's amazing. I know he's a little charmer. <laughs> <laughs> A true evidence. You want to see you. Somebody wants to see you. Oops. I, yeah. No. I it again. Yeah. Here we go. Um, see if I can get this right. This is uh, my baby, my 1956 D28 Martin guitar. And uh, I've had it for, let's see, since 1976. That's what, 44 years. Um, and yes, it has been on quite a road with me um, and written a lot of songs with me. I'm very honored that it's my partner. One of the best sounding Martins I think I've ever heard. Or oh, played. thank you. Yeah, that's what like, people it's have amazing. said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's pretty amazing. I'm sure there's a lot of uh, figures out there in Nashville that say, "Man, I can play better than that." He need he doesn't need to have that guitar. I need to have that guitar. That's your guitar. You need that's that yours. It is mine. For each before you guys jump into your next song or your last song there okay here we uh, go a lot of people asking jerry where they can get a bandana okay i'm glad you asked mama bear thanks for asking i think if we're lucky and i think we're going to be pretty lucky this is actually going to be available on my website starting tomorrow cool yeah so um yeah because i mean like i said who, who would have thought bandanas would have been the thing to buy now but um yeah it <laughs> That, that's the plan. Now, let me say this. If you live in Canada, however, I, it's, it's only for U.S. shipping. So if you live in Canada, we have to figure out a way to get it to you by some other means, like to a U.S. address where you can go get it later or, or get it. Well, oh, look at there. Awesome. <laughs> no, you could send them to me. We, gotta, we, we, we didn't get to get a, give Ashley one because uh, we got out of Canucopi before we even unwrapped the box. I know. Anyway, I got mine yet. You need a Canadian distributor is what you need. We, we need to figure out a way to do it in Canada. And if, if we can figure out that, then we'll, we'll make that happen as well. So uh, well, right now it's U.S. distribution, but uh, we'll, I'm on, we'll work on that. I'm on the Great Lakes, Jerry. So you could ship them up to me. People could send their money. I could paddle them across the lakes <laughs> at night. <laughs> And five oh, CDs. Bandanas. You're gonna get you're gonna get arrested for smuggling bandanas. <laughs> in the right. Of all the things to get arrested for, it would be smuggling bandanas, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's oh, that's just lame. I tell you what, though, it would make for a great news story. <laughs> and I, let's do it because then, if, if if you get arrested, I'll sell more bandanas. Yeah, well, that's true. Yeah, will you bail me out though? What's that? Will you bail me out? Sure. <laughs> If they'll, if they'll take bandanas for uh for a bail, yeah. yeah. I don't like the length of, pause I don't like yeah, long pause, yeah. I think, I think bandanas would be a good currency for bail, actually. Okay, here we go. I know we're running out of time, so let's do Thank you so much, Dennis. This has just been a great distraction and a ton of fun. It's been a great night. This stream. It flows so clearly and sings to know how dearly each turn 
each tumble, each drop, so humble, each sparkle of light gives us gift of life. To this lady that only wants us to listen to all this endless mission unspoiled, unchanging yet always rearranging from a winter's deep cold to the beauty that beholds the bird cedar white pine and spruce that whisper a timeless chords with their deep and far-reaching roots that echo the steps of all those people this ground lies so sacred and sound and always awaits us with so much at stake we shoulder its fate and its preservation for all generations standing proudly we must speak loudly for this place, this quiet place, this quiet All right. Thank you. Yeah. Caitlin and Ashley, that was beautiful. Too bad I didn't have a lighter. I I'd had that big flick the whole time. <laughs> there you go. There you go. got it. <laughs> okay, so uh, guys, thank you so much for tonight. This has been an awesome night. Uh, I, I'd say this probably goes down on record as one of the best shows I've ever had. Uh, Entertaining, you. and you know what? I hope I hope it helped take everybody's mind off of all the uh, the nastiness that's going on out there right now. And sure, like good hey, for me. everybody, just please play safe, uh, you know, thank you, your fellow neighbor, give him a hand if you have that opportunity. Thank somebody that's on the front line because uh, as John could attest, they, they they go above and beyond what they need to do to, uh, to, you know, to keep us safe and living healthy. And it doesn't matter if you live in Canada, the United States or, or abroad, you know what I mean? We're, we're all in this together. So let's, uh, let's band together and kick this COVID-19's ass. We need to do that. We really yeah. do. Yeah. Right. Uh, we're just going to close the, sh the show up, and maybe we can get one more song solo out of Jerry uh, okay. in the final closing. But uh, I'm just going to go through my closing statements here. Uh, don't forget, people, next week we have Bill Swift from Swift Canoe and Kayak going to be on the show. We'll be talking a lot about uh, the whole Swift family and their, their history within Algonquin and, uh, of course, their, uh, their fantastic canoes. We'll be doing that. On April the 18th, we have a special edition show. That's a Saturday at 7 p.m. We're going to be doing a live version of the Ontario Backcountry Canoe Symposium. Uh, the show was actually canceled. That was supposed to be here on April 4th. And we're going to be doing a live version with many of the presenters actually presenting their stuff here on the show. So that's going to be great. Thanks to David Bain and uh, Matt Olson for uh, pulling me into this one with them. I'm really looking forward to that, of course. Uh, and then on April 21st, we have special guest. Everybody knows him, Joe, Joe Robinette. Uh, we're looking forward to that one. They're going to be a great show uh, and uh, going to have a lot of great questions answered there for sure. If you haven't already done so, please do hit the subscribe button for Canoe Hounds Outdoor Adventures or Canoe Hound Adventures and uh, hit that, uh, that bell notification so you know when our shows are coming up. And then follow us on Facebook and you'll be able to see what's happening great guests like the, all these people uh, that are on on a weekly basis. We try to bring you what we can. Uh, 
please check out Jerry's website. I will post Caitlin and Ashley's websites on the uh, in the description below. Uh, that will be on there tomorrow, so you could actually check out their wares and what they uh, what they have going on on their website. That would be awesome too. Check out uh, the outdoorkindllc.org. Is that right? Outdoorkind.org. Yeah. Outdoorkind.org to see what John Van Berger is all about and how uh, what he does for frontline and uh, first responders and things of that sort. Uh, buy some stickers, buy some t-shirts. That'll really help out their cause there as well. Uh, if you enjoyed the show tonight, hit that thumbs up. We got 61 thumbs up. Let's see if we can get it to 75. That would be awesome for tonight because our guests tonight were fantastic, of course. Ladies, thank you for joining us tonight. Awesome, incredible. Very nice to meet you. I'd like to meet you all in person for sure. Jerry, high five to you, man. You did an awesome job Hello. tonight. I appreciate you taking the time out of your time to uh, enlighten everybody with your your talents, and uh, that's a great thing. So, anyways, until next peop next time, people, I am Dennis, also known as Canoe Hound. Stay safe, stay healthy, and keep the adventures alive. Have a great night, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, stick around for the after party. Thanks, guys. <laughs>